This is WCVB-TV Boston. Good evening, I'm Hugh Downs, and this is 2020. On the ABC News Magazine, 2020, with Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters. Tonight, Jerry Lee Lewis, a legendary entertainer. His fans call him the killer. His fifth wife died from an overdose of drugs. Now, there are questions. He said that he would kill her before she left him. She looked like she'd been in a fight. Did he let her die? On Judgment Day, it'll all come out, and we'll see what happens. Geraldo Rivera opens a special 2020 investigation into the death of the killer's wife. I did some of my best work there because I was reacting honestly to honest emotions coming from these farmers. Hollywood movie makers making a movie in the Tennessee farmland. They spent $7 million, gave jobs to more than a 1,000 people. But more important, working with the farmers and townsfolk of the valley, they found something wonderful. Tom Hoving with a warm and moving story of Hollywood Down Home. Good. How am I doing? How am I doing? How am I doing, fellas? Thank you. <laughs> Ed Koch, eccentric and flamboyant mayor of New York, city of power and elegance, and some of the worst slums in the nation. Now he's written a controversial book. You say the mayor is nasty to you? I want you to know the mayor is nasty to everybody. Tonight, Barbara Walters talks with Ed Koch about power and friends and enemies. Up front tonight, Jerry Lee Lewis and some serious questions about the apparent suicide of his young wife, Sean. If there is a living legend in rock and roll, it's Jerry Lee Lewis, the piano-thumping contemporary of Elvis Presley. Lewis, nicknamed the killer by his fans, was cleared by a Mississippi grand jury of any criminal responsibility for his wife's death last summer. But there's a question now whether the jury considered all the evidence. Here with a report on a special 2020 investigation is Geraldo Rivera. Geraldo. Thanks, Hugh. This is not an indictment. We're not accusing Jerry Lee Lewis of having committed any crime. This is a report of our four-month-long investigation of the facts and circumstances surrounding Sean Lewis's death. This is our report on the death of the killer's wife. Sean and Michelle Stevens Lewis was one of the sweetest ladies that I, I've ever met in my life. I loved her well, with all my heart and soul. And there was no way that Jerry D. Lewis could ever, or would ever, even think of taking another person's life. The death of his wife, Sean, and her family's belief that he was somehow to blame is just the most recent storm to swirl around the head of Jerry Lee Lewis. wild piano playing style that attracted attention back in 1957 is still evident. But the now 48-year-old performer has had to survive controversy, years of alcohol and drug abuse, violent outbursts, and tragic misfortune. He's been married five times, once to his 13-year-old cousin. Two of his children have died accidentally. His fourth wife drowned less than two years ago, while Lewis himself almost died of drug abuse. Uh, Jerry Lee. Take thee, Sean. Take thee, Sean. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. According to God. But when he married 25-year-old Sean Stevens last summer, the killer, as he is universally called by his fans and friends, seemed to be on the comeback trail. It's the greatest thing that ever happened to me. The killer is settling down. But the killer's life didn't settle down for long. Just two and a half months after their wedding, Sean Lewis was dead, officially the victim of a self-inflicted drug overdose. She apparently killed herself with a handful of methadone pills. I couldn't imagine what was going on. I mean, my wife was dead, and everything seemed to be going fine, and all of a sudden, here I'm getting ready for a funeral. And, uh... I would just had a wedding. Jerry Lee and Sean lived about 10 miles outside this small Mississippi town of Hernando. The investigation of Sean's death was admittedly the biggest case ever handled by the part-time county prosecutor, Bill Ballard. 
Do you think you know the facts and circumstances surrounding the death of Sean Lewis? Completely. No, I don't. Do you and think that if I ever will. Do you think that you know enough to exculpate, to say that Jerry Lee Lewis was not guilty of anything? Uh, to use the term guilt uh, implies a criminal act that, that he committed, which in my mind I don't believe he did. I don't believe he committed a criminal act. In September, although some questions remain, a Mississippi grand jury cleared Jerry Lee Lewis of any criminal responsibility for his wife's apparent suicide. Profoundly dissatisfied with the way the original investigation into her death was conducted, Sean's family, who lives here near Detroit, Michigan, has been fighting to get the case reopened. Their reason? They just don't believe she died the way Jerry Lee Lewis said she did. As far as I'm concerned, they didn't tell us anything. They didn't do anything uh, right down there. And uh, more or less, they just closed the door on us and said, this is the way it is, and that's it. At the urging of what Sean's family, 2020 decided to conduct this independent investigation into the facts and circumstances surrounding Sean Lewis's death. For reasons that I think will soon be very clear to you, we believe this case should be reopened. Point one, Jerry Lee Lewis had a history of violent behavior toward women. I want to ask you straight out, Jerry Lee, are you a woman beater? I beg your pardon? A woman beater. <laughs> no, sir, I'm not a woman beater. Did you ever hit her? I've never hit a woman in my life. So Lewis claims he never hit a woman. You know, but as you'll see throughout this report, right, many of his statements I are at odds with the recollections of others who knew him well. Dick West was his bodyguard for 20 years. West was fired in 1982, according to Jerry Lee Lewis. Lack of discipline. How about violence toward women? Do you ever smack around his women? Oh, um, that's been a quite frequent affair. Do you think he smacked Sean around? Not sure. Do you ever see any of those incidents? I've seen him slap her a time or two. I mean, he says he never hit a woman. Well, then that would not be the truth. Did you ever hit Sean? No way, Jose. One of the rumors about you, though, Jerry, as you know, is that you do hit Well, find me some women I've hit. I want to meet him. Well, meet Mary Kathy Jones, who lived with Jerry Lee for almost four years. Once she says she annoyed him with something she was asking. And he said, hey, hey, please shut up. And I didn't, and he was sitting on this side of me, came around, hit me, and knocked my nose in front of my eye. You mean he broke your nose? Mm-hmm. Point two. Just a week before Sean died, there was apparently a violent argument at Lewis's Mississippi home. It involved Jerry Lee, his wife, Sean, and her and sister, yeah, Shelley, yeah, who had flown down from saying, Detroit just, for a yeah. visit. And he slapped me on the leg, and then he slapped me again across the face. And Sean went to get up to say something, and he just, he turned around and backhanded her because he was standing by my lawn chair. And then he said, uh, you girls better get your shit together, and he walked off and went to the house. And we just stayed out by the pool and cried, didn't know what to do, till we got calmed down. A short time later, Shelley told Sean and Jerry Lee Whatever. that she wanted to go home. And Sean said, well, I'm leaving too. And that's when he had threatened her. He said, you're not, I'll kill you before you leave. Point three. That allegedly was not the first time he had threatened Sean. Scott Bunn was Sean's boyfriend before she married Jerry Lee Lewis. Did Sean ever express any fear to you about threats coming from Jerry? Well, when she came to Houston to visit me one time, she uh, told me that he had told her that uh, if she tried to leave me, we'd kill her. He Listen to what allegedly happened when former girlfriend Mary Kathy Jones told Jerry Lee she was leaving. He said that if I stayed in town, that he put me in a mental institution or put me in jail and I'd never see daylight. And the reason for this was he said that he couldn't have any of his friends see me around town. Did he ever shoot at you? Yes. I had slammed the bedroom door, and I started walking down the hall, and he fired through the door. And he does, the 
carpet in the hallway was so thick, he couldn't, know, he couldn't have known if I was down the hall or right in front of the door. Point four concerns a possible motive, if indeed there was foul play. Aside from intangibles like pride or jealousy, Jerry Lee had a more practical reason. If he was worried about being left behind by an angry wife, she could have told the authorities about his questionable financial dealings. Court records obtained by 2020 show that he owes thousands of dollars to various creditors and hundreds of thousands to the IRS. $2,100 I got to go to. $2,100 to go to anybody? Indeed, the IRS had already held at least three auctions of his property and is currently considering a criminal case against him. Do you think there'll be an indictment or anything like that? I wouldn't think so. I don't know why, because I'm certainly not guilty of anything. I've stolen no money from the IRS. I'm not that stupid. I may be a little dense, but I'm not completely crazy. <laughs> you can't beat the IRS, brother. Jerry Lee denies that he conceals his assets from his creditors or the government, but he often gets paid in cash. In this house where he's lived for the past eight years, and the cars that he drives are in other people's names. This receipt, for instance, for a 1983 Cadillac Eldorado was purchased in the name of Mary Kathy Jones, and it was paid for with more than $25,000 in cash. Sean Lewis, who had access to many of these details, could have made a powerful witness against him. An interesting note. Shortly after being questioned by the authorities on the day Sean died, Jerry Lee was seen leaving his house with a large metal box. It looked like a lot of money to me. I would say a box full of money and a rather large box at that. I wished I was 18. And a bar in Memphis. Point five. The portrait of Jerry Lee Lewis that has emerged from this investigation reveals what seems almost a split personality. One ex-band member referred to him as a Jekyll and Hyde. On the one hand, he could be a generous, considerate person, but on the other, he could turn violent and paranoid, especially when under the influence of drugs, apparently a frequent condition. Remember Dr. George Nicopolis? Dr. Nick of Memphis was the man who had his medical license suspended for over-prescribing narcotics to Elvis Presley and others. Well, Jerry Lee Lewis, as you can see, was also one of Dr. Nick's patients, as the doctor testified to during his hearing in 1980. And doctor, did you prescribe for him amphetamines and amphetamine-type substances after he was drug-free? Um, <laughs> not until he got back on him. Dr. Nick was just one of Jerry Lee's providers, but after he nearly died in 1981, Jerry Lee said he was cleaning up his act. Apparently that never happened. Last summer, at least according to Shelley, his home was allegedly like a private drugstore. I seen a, a whole drawer full of vials and syringes, liquid stuff, and pills, pill containers. Ironically, the methadone Sean allegedly used to kill herself came from a legal prescription Jerry Lee had hanging around the house. Point six. From Jerry Lee Lewis's point of view, probably the most difficult question concerns the physical condition of his wife's body at the time of her death. Sean Lewis may indeed have died of a drug overdose, but that does not explain why or how her body had been bruised and smeared with blood, some of it Jerry Lee Lewis's blood. She didn't even have a scratch on her. Sean was as neat as a... Uh, she was something else, man. But Sean's father, Tom Stevens, remembers the condition of the body differently. She looked bad. She looked like she'd been in a fight. Um, she was uh, marked up, bruised. Fingernails were broke. Blood on her fingernails, on her hands, in between her fingers. Danny Phillips, co-owner of the funeral home here in Hernando, Mississippi, examined Sean's body. She had um, what it was obvious to me was four indentions on her arm here, which were fingernail, f finger bruises, fingerprints, with fingernails, indentions above those bruises. What about her fingernails? The fingernails on her right hand appeared to be broken to me and appeared to have blood up under them. 
I think there was a struggle of some kind. Now, whether it resulted in her death, I don't know, but I feel like that, uh, I feel like that there was a struggle. Point seven. Even the authorities believe there was a violent struggle on the night Sean Lewis died. In your opinion, Mr. Bell, did an altercation, did a fight, a physical fight, take place the night before Sean Lewis died? Do I think one occurred? I think one did. My own opinion is that it did. That there was a physical fight, a violent the, confrontation? The condition of the bedroom when I arrived there gave that impression. We had a slight argument uh, that night, and uh, like we did every night, which was nothing. Danny Phillips said that on the day of Sean's funeral, something about Jerry Lee Lewis's physical condition made him even more suspicious. He looked very sharp, but I did notice that on his right hand, he had two fingernail scratches from, a, say, midway above his wrist all the way down through the part, this part of his hand. Jerry Lee has his own explanation. He claims he got so angry after Sean killed herself that he punched his fist through a door. You, you rammed the bathroom door out of frustration? What about this? What about this? Sure it is. Is that where the blood on her body and the rock yeah. came from? I'm right here. Is that, this is the cut you guys That's right. The bloody clothes. <laughs> Explain the bloody clothes. Though. Well, goes right back to the skull. The blood was shooting out of my own hand here, man, just shooting out everywhere. And I was just wiping it off with anything I could find. Point eight. Lewis was never formally questioned. That is, he was never put under oath and even asked about what happened the night Sean Lewis died. Was Jerry Lee Lewis ever questioned under oath about the physical condition of his wife's body? Not to my knowledge. He was not questioned. And I really don't think he was. According to Mr. Ballard, the reason Lewis was never questioned under oath was simple. The autopsy performed on Sean's body showed that the bruises had nothing to do with her death. There may indeed have been a violent confrontation, but it was the drugs that killed her. That leads us now to point nine, a legal question that apparently nobody, certainly none of the Mississippi authorities involved in this case ever asked. A hypothetical. Under Mississippi law, man beats wife. Wife reacts by taking an overdose of drugs. Man knows at some point during her life that she has taken drugs. Is the man guilty of anything? Could he be guilty of anything? Is there um, anything like criminally negligent homicide or a manslaughter? Yes, sir. I think you could get into a, a, a manslaughter situation like that. You're presenting a situation where there's obviously a some knowledge on the part of the husband that the wife is taking an overdose or something. Did she tell you the night before she died that she had taken the drugs or that she had taken she drugs? She ran out of the bathroom and told me, she said, well, she said, I'm tired of doing all this. I just took me a handful of sleeping pills. I said, well, honey, if you did that, you better get your heart right with God or you better let me take you to the hospital right now. She said, oh, I'm, I'm feeling all right now. But she laid down and she fell asleep pretty quick. And, and I was still worried about her. I kept checking her pulse, you know. I checked her pulse about five times through the night, and she was perfect. Why didn't you call an ambulance during the evening, during the night? At her request, I didn't call it. Point 10. So Jerry Lee claims that because he was concerned about his wife's welfare, he stayed up and watched her into the night, and that she appeared to be normal. Well, to find out what her condition should have been, given the fact that she was dying from a methadone overdose, we interviewed two experts. Dr. John Fiegel and Dr. Gregory Kaufman both reviewed Sean's autopsy. We all Kaufman the at the request of her family, Fiegel at our request. Uh, I doubt that he would observe everything to be fine had he adequately checked her five times during the night. I believe that any competent observer, uh, given a period of observation, let's say, through a whole night, would have been able to detect that something was seriously wrong. She was fine. She was breathing fine. Her pulse was beating fine. Her heart was beating perfect. She was sleeping, and uh, I thought she was fine. The breathing would become labored. Breathing may again become noisy. This is because of the development of pulmonary edema or fluid, flooding, if you will, in the lungs. 
Even if Jerry Lee Lewis simply did not notice that his wife was dying, Dr. Fiegel makes point number 11. It involves reasonable behavior and common sense. If you're dealing with a person who has told you they've taken an overdose of sleeping pills, as she said, then you would attempt to wake them sometime during the night to see if you could wake them up. And that, to me, is a normal behavior. And if you can't wake that person up, then I would think that you'd recognize that something is radically wrong and we need medical help. The final point is perhaps the most important. Unless and until the public officials here in DeSoto County, Mississippi, decide to take a fresh look at this case, we will probably never know the true circumstances surrounding the death of the killer's wife. And I think that on Judgment Day, it'll all come out and we'll see what happens. And you'll find out that Jerry Lee Lewis is not a killer. I don't think we'll have to wait until Judgment Day to find that out. Since Jerry Lee Lewis was never formally questioned, I'm curious to see what the reaction of the Mississippi authorities will be to his statements about what happened the night Sean Lewis died. Now, Earl, you put the spotlight on this, and I'm curious what you think personally about why they didn't question more thoroughly and earlier. I've, I've thought about that. First, you think, well, is there something evil going on? And I don't think so. I think it had to do with, first, their lack of experience. I almost said incompetence, but their lack of experience. They just don't get big murder cases or wrongful death cases in that part of Mississippi. Secondly, more basically, Jerry Lee Lewis is absolutely the biggest celebrity in that part of the state. And I think they were just shy, really, about questioning him. There's visibility and uh, yeah, importance. He's a big and star. You know, you can't just go and ask him what happened. Thank you, Geraldo. Well, later in the broadcast, Tom Hoving with a special magic that Hollywood filmmakers found in the hills of Tennessee. But next, prepare yourself to be amused and startled with the marvelously outspoken mayor of New York City, 